You know X try to stage a last minute raid. GC de Klerk lives on this sprint stage as well as a disappointing finish to the Saudi tour for Caleb Ewan puncturing late. This was Alula Old Town doing a loop and a couple of laps around a circuit and then finishing in Alula Old Town. 140 Ks nailed on sprint stage given that there were not the same windy conditions that the race had experienced in the previous week. That was good news for Lotto Sudal who had two priorities for the day which was Maxim van Gil's defense of his GC in the leader's jersey and leading Caleb Ewan out for another sprint victory. He was obviously dominant in the first stage. Zelig's crashed out. He's not here. But you know X tried to be a fly in the ointment. They got Jurianstad in the break with Sharmik. Sharmik about sixth on GC. And they were just trying to gain time on GC. Put pressure on Lotto Sudal, but Lotto had the Gent chasing almost the whole day behind. They also had with them Yannick Steimler, the German on Quickstep, as well as Polychronis Sortzakis from Q8 team. Why is Steimler here? It's because Quickstep don't really rate Ballerini, uh, his chances of beating Caleb Ewan. Put Steimler in the break. They don't have to chase. He can work with the UNOX guys. They've got different priorities, and maybe the break stays away. Uh, who knows? Like, it's February. Wind could happen. The trains might not be that strong. But Bahrain were riding pretty defensively as well, or were prepared to. We'll see them later with Gradic and Milan, who, who both of whom really impressed me this week. But for UNOX, and I said this on Twitter, yeah, this didn't work. It had a pretty low probability of working, but if you don't try, then... You're not going to get anything and you're just going to end up sixth. And they tried a Hail Mary and it didn't work out. But if you do that, you know, it increased their chance of doing something and overturning Van Hills in the green leaders jersey here by, say, 7%. And if you do it across races all year, then maybe eventually you get really lucky one day and it'll pay off. But the sprinters, it will be. It was supposed to be between Dylan Kronovec and already taken his first win for Bike Exchange and Caleb Ewan, who had a full train there as well, last man being De Boist and second last man without Zelig being Roger Kluger. But as they came into the old town, the break, well, it dropped off Polychronis, and then the Unox guys, particularly Uranstad, were reaching their limit, and the sprinters team were closing in on them. 38 seconds, you see, kind of like that reminded me of Caruso patting Bilbao in last Euro stage. Bora were also helping for, they were going for Danny Van Poppel, despite having Martin last and Mayus here, which is a bit curious, and Steimler eventually counter-attacked Sharmik, who was dead. Steimler looks really good. I'm thinking he he might want to be like fourth man in the quick step A train um, before Asgren. Who knows? But intermediate sprint didn't really change anything either, and Steimler was eventually caught with the clerk counter-attacking, because remember, the clerk's actually quite close on GC, The bike exchange were not happy. They didn't want to let GC to clerk live, and then Bahrain wanted to protect Santiago Betrago second on GC. So they just shut the race down completely, which, I mean, second on GC at Saudi Tour, I guess is good practice for those guys, you and the squad, to just ride and protect protect Betrago in a race situation. But Ewan then punctured, which, as I said, kind of ruined the sprint in that we want, I wanted to see the heavyweight battle between Ewan and Groenewijk, and, and once he was out, the boys kind of had to go for his own. 1K to go once again. Bora took first position. They came across over the top of Quickstep. Quickstep train not as strong as Bora, nor Bike Exchange, nor Lotto Sudal here, although Ballerini would have a slightly better result, but it isn't the strongest or deepest sprint field. Bora, I mean, they should have a pretty good train here with, they got Van Poppel, Mayus, and Martin Lass for this level, they, they really should be staying in front. But as Bike Exchange once again doing really well with just Mezgetz for Kronerweg and sitting on Van Poppel, UAE though, just an absolute shambles, frankly. Like, what is going on here with Gaviria? I don't like what's going on. These two guys go off to the left. I don't know who is in front of Fernando Gaviria. Gaviria cannot decide whether to trust those guys or the last man to follow them to the left-hand side. So it looks like maybe they're going for two sprinters. I don't know. Uh, someone need, maybe should tell UAE they're not at risk of relegation. They don't need two sprinters going for UCI points, getting top 10. And there's not even any points for less than third place here. And Gaviria shouldering De Gea, trying, you know, trying to take Groenewegen's wheel. Then he comes out of Groenewegen's wheel and he's like, do I follow my lead out man? Decides, no, nah, I'm just going to do nothing. 
sits on Groenewegen and he gets boxed in. He can't win anyway. So Groenewegen's claimed Van Poppel's wheel pretty early, 250 metres to go. Perfect lead out. Great timing from Groenewegen. And you see he's seated here. Once he opens up, Ballerini, Gaviria, McClay, they ain't beating him. Uh, a, a sprinter of the calibre of Groenewegen without Caleb Ewan being here. But McClay, he just... It's why he's a good sprinter and a good lead out man. He just he keeps sprinting to the line. He actually takes second here, coming around the long way over Ballerini and Co. Really nice sprint from McClay. He's considering the position he was in. He got nearly chopped by Gaviria. He held his wheel the wrong side of Ballerini. He had to come out late. Nice finish from him. And I would say Gaviria and Ballerini's shape are certainly not their peak shape. Uh, it's not 17, 18 Gaviria and Ballerini. He was firing. Uh, last year in February, winning Omlope and Provence. But Groenewerken couldn't hope for more. Two out of three sprint stages for Bike Exchange. Jayco, the kit still looks like when you put it in a, in the wash first, like the colours have run. So I don't know, maybe they'll fix that at some point. And what's on the left right-hand side? of? Did each team get given special kits with a Lula on it? This is where the stage finish. You see it on the left-hand arm here, or a Bike Exchange done some sort of like ad hoc sponsorship deal saudi tour stage five in the books i gotta say is pretty exciting racing across the week compared to the 2020 edition this parkour was was really good and i've looked at the views on the videos i'm like wow people people have been interested in this racing groenewegen wins ahead of mcclay ballerini gavidia van poppel bonifacio de bois lacroix Licra and Dainese. A bit of a disappointing week, I would say, for dsm but not so for van hills stumbling as he got on the top step uh, I guess it is his first time staying on the top step after a race. Here. Neo Pro season last year, looking good at Saudi Tour here, beating Botrago, Costa, De Klerk in fourth, Van Poppel, Os, Sharmik, Geniers, De Klerk, Alexis, Renard, rounding out the top 10 on GC. But thanks for watching all the videos. Subscribe down below if you want to see more. In February, I've got Tour of Oman, UAE Tour, a lot of Middle Eastern races, Provence, and Andalusia. Make sure to check out the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast for my Valenciana and Bessege coverage, the final stages tomorrow. Till then, ciao.